there are tons of videos out there comparing the Amazon Fire Stick to the Roku. Typically, these videos consist of telling you what the specs are or even showing you what's in the box. This is not one of those videos. At Home Connect Solutions, we've been in hundreds of people's homes, seeing several different setups and scenarios, and we've actually been able to put these two streaming giants to the test. And today I'm gonna to show you exactly what makes one better than the other so you can make a decision in your home. Hey guys, Tim Trich here, and welcome to the Home Connect Solutions channel, where we focus on ways to help you become successful with streaming, cutting the cord, and your home's Wi-Fi. Please consider hitting that like button or subscribing to our channel so you can be alerted when we drop more content. Let's get started. Amazon Fire Stick and Roku are big names when it comes to streaming. Unless you already have Apple products in your house, which a lot of you do, these two streaming giants have been the go-tos for anyone looking to cut the cord, move to streaming, and get away from cable. But how do you really tell which one is better for you? I mean, they both really accomplish the same thing. They turn any TV with an HDMI port into a smart TV, or any smart TV with an HDMI port into an even smarter TV. So it can be really difficult to determine which one works better for you. At Home Connect, we don't just consult on what streaming devices you use. We actually put these things to the test. We're using them every day in people's homes. We're pulling out cable boxes and replacing them with a streaming device in almost all cases. And the Roku and the Amazon Fire Stick have been go-tos for us just like everyone else. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover some clear reasons why one may be more beneficial to you and your setup in your home. These are things that I haven't really seen people on YouTube talk about much. And I think they're really important when it comes to streaming, cutting the cord, and your home's general setup. Okay guys, let me tell you how the video is gonna work. I'm gonna go out into a living room scenario where a TV's not on the wall, we have a sound bar, something we would run typically run into typically in a home. We'll compare the Roku first, the Fire Stick second. We'll kind of point out the differences and the things that I think make them stand out in certain scenarios. And then we'll kind of summarize our findings real quick. And then by the end of the video, you should be able to choose which one may or may not work in your home um, based on how you're set up. So let's get started. All right, guys, let's talk about the Roku first. One of the things that makes this device really, really great is its form factor. So, it, and this doesn't really apply with the Roku sticks. Yes, they make a Roku stick. The stick is very similar to the Amazon Fire Stick. What I wanna compare is the Ultra. In testing both the sticks and the Roku Ultras, I really do like the Ultras better. I think they work better. I think they're a better quality product. And over the years, the price has come down. They used to be around 100 bucks a piece or even a little bit more. And now the ones like this one, which is the Roku Ultra LT, um, has this is around 50 bucks. So they really have come down in price and made them a, a great little um, direct swap for a cable box. So one of the advantages of, of this is its form factor. As you can see here, there's an HDMI port right on the device which basically makes it very, very simple to swap out with a cable box. So if this was our cable box over here, all we would have to do is pull the cable box out, unplug the power and everything, leave the HDMI cord in place, and simply replace it with this Roku and plug the exact same HDMI cable that was powering the cable box into here, give this thing some power, and you literally just swapped out your equipment just that easy. Doesn't matter if the cables are going through the wall, doesn't matter how you have them run, doesn't matter if this is in a cabinet or if it's sitting up next to the mantle like here, it makes it very easy to swap out. So um, one of the things I like about this device is from a swapping standpoint, because it has that HDMI port on the back and does make it very simple and you can use it with the remote can control it wherever it's at. 
it does make this device um, really nice. Now, one of the downsides to this form factor, in my opinion, is let's say your cable box is sticking up behind your TV. Um, a lot of times, especially in a scenario where there is a TV mounted on a fireplace or whatnot, um, a lot of times people will stick them up behind and they got them zip tied and all sorts of stuff. You would be forced to kind of do that same thing because we want to use that same cable. But you could get up behind your TV, figure out a way to mount this or set it in your TV mount or whatever, um, and then just plug the cable out of the cable box right into here and you've, you've swapped equipment very, very easily. Um, the form factor does make this very, very nice. So that's one real big advantage of the Roku Ultra. All right, guys, let's talk about one of the nice things about Roku. So you've got it hooked up, you swapped it out with your cable box, and now you want to, you know, start using it. One of the things you really like about Roku is it's simple to use interface. And people out on YouTube, this is like one of the number one things I read and listen to is that they love the interface. The interface is very, very simple. So if you're the type of person who's a little nervous about cutting the cord and, and being able to run this thing, you guys will probably like Roku a little better than Fire Stick. As you'll see later in this video, the, Ro the Fire Stick um, does have a little bit busier interface. Now I have a lot of apps on here installed, but I mean, you could have just one or two boxes based on your needs. Maybe you just need YouTube TV, Netflix, and Amazon Prime, and that's all you need. That's great. This is a device I've used over the years, so it's got accumulated more. But the interface is very easy to use. It's very easy to add apps. That is done simply by going down here to your streaming channel store. Click on that. You search, go to search channels. I'll come over here and let's just say we were gonna do Netflix. Come over here and start typing Netflix. I'm just moving the I'm just moving the cursor around with the left, right, up, down buttons and then clicking OK, OK? So you can see it found it in the list of terms there. So I'll go over and choose it, click on it, and then hit, it would say add channel. I already have it installed. So it would say add channel. You click that and just like that, it shows up in your list of icons like it's shown here. Netflix. So it's one of those things where it is a really, really simple to navigate and use interface. That is definitely a pro. However, I would like to talk about something that's a little less of a pro. And this is something we run into pretty commonly in homes, and that is the use of an external sound bar. Or receiver, maybe you have TV ceiling speakers in your home and you have a receiver um, in there. Typically, the rule of thumb is that the Roku can control whatever it's plugged directly into. So, in this case, I have it plugged directly into my TV. It is not plugged into the sound bar. Maybe in your home, it also would be plugged into a TV, or maybe you have a little bit more complicated situation where it's plugged into a receiver, a video receiver. So, the thing I'll caution you on is if you do have a little bit more of an advanced audio setup at your house, you may need to incorporate some help a little bit with the Roku, making sure things are connected a certain way and you're taking advantage of things like HDMI ARC um, to be able to run all of it with one remote. The remote to me is the downfall of Roku. It just isn't as smart as the, Roku, as the Fire Stick as you'll see. For example, I can only tell it to turn on and off my TV. I cannot control it to turn up the volume on my soundbar. And that is because my TV is just set up to talk to my soundbar through a digital audio out cable. And this device can only control what it's plugged into. So it can turn off on and off my TV, no problem. I can run and navigate the Roku, but if I wanna run the volume, I have to go grab a different remote for this soundbar. Okay, so to me, a huge disadvantage. I can't program this remote to say, you know, turn on and off the TV, but when you run volume, do that on this device. This device doesn't allow me to do that. The other real big disadvantage of the Roku versus the Fire Stick is the voice commands. So for example, on YouTube TV and Hulu, two big streaming services out there, probably the biggest two, um, they have the ability to change channels with your voice. You can just tell a device, go to this channel, but you can't do that on a Roku. 
if you say go to ESPN, it's going to try to install the ESPN app. It doesn't understand how to open the YouTube TV or Hulu app and then go find that channel. So it really does become a little bit of a disadvantage. The other thing is you can't ask this, what's the weather or, you know, add something to your shopping list or some of the things that has that are built into the Fire Stick remote that I'm going to show you here shortly. So while it does have a voice remote, and if you can see that it does have a little microphone right here. So you do have the ability to do things. I can say open Netflix, open Prime, I can probably turn up my TV and some little things like that. But it really has a limited feature set on what it can do with your voice. And to me, that's really the big downside because TVs are really cheap nowadays. And unfortunately, you really do need to buy a sound bar in a lot of cases to amplify the sound. These TVs are so thin, there's just no room for speakers. And so a lot of times we see sound bars in homes and we'll actually be um, we'll actually choose a Fire Stick over the Roku just because of some of those limitations. Now, if you do have um, a receiver, a video audio receiver, uh, typically I've seen the Rokus be able to control the volume on those and run the power on those, but then it doesn't turn on the TV. So unless your receiver is telling your TV to turn on when it turns on, you still need two remotes. But in that case, you'd need the actual TV remote to turn on the TV. So Again, it's just one of those things where um, we really see it as a disadvantage. However, if you have a very simple home setup, just a TV sitting on a stand, no sound bar, no sound equipment, and you just want something very easy to use, guys, Roku, you'll, you'll really like it. So let's, uh, let's switch over to the Amazon Fire Stick. All right, guys. Let's talk about the Amazon Fire Stick now. So one thing you may notice if I get out of the way, you notice nothing's sitting on the mantle, right? We didn't have to go to any crazy extremes to hide the device. They are, because they're a small form factor, they actually just hide, they actually plug directly into an HDMI port in the back and they hide themselves. Now in a scenario where you have a receiver in a cabinet, maybe the video receiver in a cabinet, they would plug into that directly as well. So again, they're very, they are much easier to hide the other thing you may notice is there's a lot busier interface up here, okay? So there's a lot going on on the screen, which typically uh, for a lot of people is creates a, an aspect of challenge, right? It's just, it's not as simple as the Roku to, to navigate. However, once you kind of get it set up the way you like it and get your icons where you need them and get logged in and everything, you do get used to it. It's just the typical Amazon way where they throw a ton of data at you. They got advertisements for the Maverick movie. As you click around up here, you'll notice the bottom icons change based off what you're clicked on, you know, making suggestions on what you can watch. And so there's just a lot more going on is really what it boils down to. However, you can customize and set up the setup so it works well for you. Um, you can rearrange these icons. Typically when we go into a home, we arrange them in a fashion so all the TVs look the same. So when you open your Hulu Live TV, it's always the first icon. And that's done very easily by simply highlighting the app you want to move. Let's say we want to move YouTube TV to be the very first icon. I'm going to, here's your remote. I'm going to go ahead and hit this menu button here. A menu is going to pop up. And it's going to say, what would you like to do? Move it, move to the front, hide from your apps. You can uninstall it from here. So it's in this case, I could just say move to front and it would go to the first place. Or I can just say move and then I can, I can move it around wherever I want. To. Okay. So if I move it to the front, that's where it's going to go. I simply click the middle button to drop it there. And now it moves over. So again, there's definitely some customization you can do and some things that make this work well. It's obviously easier to hide, um, hide the device. However, there's a couple things you can do, a little hacks you can do with a Fire Stick that I think really um, are similar enough to the Roku to make that swap out process uh, easy. For example, you can get a uh, very cheap little adapter here. This is an HDMI female to female adapter. And what that allows you to do is plug the fire stick into one side of the HDMI and the same cable that was plugged into your cable box into the other side. And then you're in the same scenario you were with the Roku where you can just use the same HDMI cable that your cable box was using. So 
If your cable box is in a lower cabinet because you had those cables pulled down through the wall so you didn't have to look at them, one simple little $2 adapter allows you to put your, place your fire stick in that cabinet as well. So again, there are pros and cons. Again, I really like the form factor of the Roku a little bit better, but being a simple device like this can allow you to do the same thing with an Amazon Fire Stick. And we just call it a little streaming hack that you can do. Um, that way you don't have to get up behind the TV. You don't have to hide cables. You don't have to figure out power. Maybe you don't have power behind the TV. Your power is down under the TV. You don't want to see your power cord going low. I mean, all those scenarios would play into this and a simple little adapter like this can, can, can um, solve that problem. All right, so the really big advantage, in my opinion, with the Amazon Fire Stick over the Roku, we kind of talked about the limitations, is the, is the Fire Stick remote. It really is a better remote. So it has Alexa built into it. Um, simply by holding this, this Alexa button up here, you can talk into the remote and tell it to do things like ask it what the weather is or to remind you in 10 minutes to put the clothes in the dryer in case you're like me and you get sucked into a show and forget to do those things and your wife gets mad at you. Um, things like that. It can also um, put things on your shopping list. It's everything, it is a true voice assistant. Turn up your TV, turn down the TV, mute the TV, pause. It does all those things for you when it's built into a fire stick like this. The other really great thing about this remote though is the fact that you can program external sound equipment. So. I'm not limited to programming whatever my Fire Stick is plugged into. I can actually tell it I have a, a Yamaha receiver or a JBL soundbar, and I can say, when, turn on, when you turn on the power, run both the TV and the soundbar, or some people, like me, I leave my soundbar on all the time. There's no real reason to turn it off. So when I hit the power button, only turn off the TV, but leave the soundbar alone. But when I run the volume, do it on the soundbar and not on the TV. So you can actually program this uh, in there and it's it's not even difficult to do. So you can actually, what you do is you go over to settings, you come down here to equipment control. I'm gonna manage equipment. You can read that there. And then I'm just gonna add equipment. So I could add a receiver if I say, uh, add a re I could add a satellite, I could add a gaming console, an Xbox. You can run a lot of stuff with this remote. Um, all sorts of things, but I would run um, maybe a receiver. I guess that's not really listed in here. Probably because I have a sound bar in there, it, it knows I don't have a sound bar and a receiver. So anyway, it would list a receiver, but you can run a whole bunch of things. And then you just walk through the steps on the screen and, and say yes or no, yes, I can hear it. No, I can't. Yes, I turned the sound off. No, it didn't. And away you go. So. If you're the type of person like me who doesn't want to use two remotes, the Fire Stick just works better. And if you just have a TV with just, you're using TV speakers, guys, the Roku is gonna work just fine. But this is a real world scenario that we run into all the time where I just like this device better, I just do. All right, the other big one is changing the channels with your voice. So as I mentioned, the Roku remote can't do that, but the Fire Stick remote can. Certain apps, not all of them, for example, DirecTV Stream right there does not allow me to change the channel with my voice. However, Amazon has worked with Hulu Live and YouTube TV, two of the probably most popular versions out there to where you can say, go to ESPN into your remote and it knows to open up the YouTube TV or Hulu app and go to that channel. Makes channel flipping really easy. Go to ESPN, go to Fox, whatever. And so it just, it's, it's a huge advantage um, in my opinion of this, because even a lot of cable boxes have voice control. So to be able to do that with streaming and not lose that feature if you're used to using it um, is really nice. Now, I will tell you the commands are very specific. Um, you have to say the right things. You can't just say ESPN like you could your cable box. You have to say go to ESPN or tune to ESPN. That's telling it to go to a channel. If you just say ESPN, it's going to try and find the ESPN app on your on your Fire Stick and allow you to install that. Um, you can say, show me funny cat videos on YouTube and it'll open YouTube and go uh, find funny cat videos. So there's really a lot of advantages. And a little footnote here is the Roku will actually do that too. You can say, go find funny videos, funny cat videos on YouTube and it will do that. So it does know how to do that. But in general, changing the channel and for your everyday live TV watching, it's just limited. This guy does a really good job. So. Between its form factor, 
and you know easy to hide and available to run multiple pieces of equipment it just in my opinion is a stronger device and a lot of it boils down to this this remote so all right guys that is it we're going to go back to the original uh studio we'll finish this up i just wanted to kind of go into a little bit more detail for you so we'll see you back there hey guys welcome back okay so i'm going to summarize my findings here and just kind of talk in general about the the what we what we just discussed so when i hear the question and see the youtube videos which one's better and they start going through specs and all this stuff i really think it's an unfair question because the short answer is it really depends. It really depends on you and your setup and what you have in your home. They each kind of shine differently in those scenarios. And my hope is that with this video and actually talking about real world experience with hooking these up and, you know, functionality with external equipment, it'll take some of the surprise work out of, you know, what you guys have going on in your home. So here's how I summarize my findings. This is kind of what I think in general, if I had to give a blanket statement about this, if your home is pretty simple setup, no sound bars, no receivers, no speakers in the ceiling. You just use the TV speakers and you have fairly simple needs for, um, you know, you're watching the TV, you, you know, you hit the, you go to the same place, you watch the same channels, you don't really care about using your voice. Um, and like a nice, simple interface, guys, the Roku is gonna kill it. It's, it's a great device. I really, really do like it. However, if your house has external sound equipment, like a sound bar, um, a receiver, ceiling speakers, whatever, or maybe your ugly cable box has been sitting on the mantle and you've been wanting to get rid of it. Um, guys, Fire Stick is really gonna do a lot better. Um, you can hide it really easy behind the TV without having to get too crazy. Um, you can control external sound equipment's volume up and down without having to reconnect how it's connected in your TV or go into your TV settings and configure that again. Um, the one caveat is, is if your receiver is in a cabinet, you may need an IR extender or you would have to watch the TV with the volume or with the doors open. Um, but again, that's a fairly simple fix. Uh, and the Roku doesn't have an answer for it. At the end of the day, you're probably, you're, you're going to have to use two remotes if you have the Roku in a lot of cases. So we really, really like the Amazon Fire Sticks when there's external sound equipment involved and the user likes the additional functionality of searching with their voice or playing music through the TV. We didn't even get into that. So you can just say, play this kind of music on TV or play this kind of music and it will go out and find it on Amazon Music and start playing it for you. Um, I think the big downside to the Amazon Fire Stick, in all honesty, is you're giving your data away. Um, and some people really take that serious. They don't want to give Amazon anything that they, that they you know, aren't given permission to. So uh, we totally understand that. We ask that question in general in front of things and just let them know, hey, you're, you have a couple choices here. You can either use your smart TV and take your chances, or we can use a Roku and chances are, you know, you might have to use two remotes. Um, but again, when we cut the cord and help people in their house, we use Amazon Fire Six almost more times than not because the general house has TVs above, you know, above the wall or above a fireplace or, you know, mounted up on a wall, um, cables running through the wall. It's just a very, very simple way to do it. So. Hopefully this helps you guys. Um, this is meant to draw out real world scenarios. I don't think that happens on YouTube enough. So I'm hoping this video kind of paints the picture for you and will help you determine which one of the devices will work better in your case. So tune in later for more videos and thanks for stopping in. We'll see you next time.